For fuck's sake, Carl, seriously, like, it's gonna look so shit. You're right, there's a lot of sun in here, isn't there? One sec. There we go. Now there's nothing that's gonna mess up the video. <laughs> Few moments in the Batman mythos are as ridiculous or made as much fun of by fans as that one time in the 1960s where Adam West Batman fought off a shark full of explosives with a can of shark repellent bat spray. As it turns out though, that scene is actually pretty faithful to the original comics, which shows that the Dark Knight does indeed carry around a can of shark mace with him at all times, just in case some sharks want to start some shit. It has actually been quite a long time since Adam West Batman graced our screen. It has, hasn't it? Rip in peace, Batman, rip in yeah. peace. So do you want to explain what's happening in that scene? That scene in particular, yes, I'd love to because it's amazing. In the 1966 Batman film, based on a series of the same name starring Adam West, the Cape Crusader is attacked in mid-air by a shark stuffed with explosives while hanging from a ladder from a helicopter. To make the whole scene more ridiculous, the helicopter is actually a bat-themed helicopter called the Batcopter, and the ladder is a bat-themed ladder called the Bat Ladder. <laughs> because of course it fucking is. Before we continue, can we just for a moment appreciate how utterly and hopelessly uncreative the character of Batman is to name every single one of his gadgets the Bat Blank. Adam West Batman took the piss a bit, like obviously with the Bat Ladder and the Bat Copter and the Shark Repellent Bat Spray, but even like gritty dark Batman still called his computer the Bat Computer. Even Batman of the future, when you've got like old ass Batman, still like unironically refers to it as the Bat Computer and the Batarang. What's like, I get it. Like he's committed to a theme, and I respect that. But how unaerodynamic do batarangs look to you? And the thing, like, and well, he's trying to avoid suspicion as being Batman. How suspicious is it that you order through your company forty thousand bat-shaped pieces of metal that you then sharpen on a leg? <laughs> I know there's a lot of them, Brad, but can you think off the top of your head of your favourite bat prefix? It has to be the bat credit card. The bat credit Just because, card. does he have a separate bank? What the is? bat bank? Yeah, because obviously he was like, if he bought his credit card, it said Bruce Wayne on it. Well, Bruce Wayne's Batman. Well, no, because I think, I think he has a separate, he has the bat bank. And he puts his money in the bat bank. Yeah. So, who operates the bat bank? Can, you, can I invest in the bat bank? Can I get a loan from the bat bank? Can I get a bat loan? I'd love to get a bat loan and then you've got like bat interest and you've got a bat mortgage. Either way, it's a bat bank or he had to go into the bank as Batman and, and request an a custom design a ca card. And open an account in costume. I miss the era of heroes and villains having all this dumb shit. Like, I miss when toy manufacturers like used to get heroes who didn't really have many gadgets and just gave them bullshit like cars. Like, so they could sell more toys to kids, like the Spider Car, and Spider Man's got like a Lamborghini. Like, he's Spider Man, he don't need a car. But obviously, once you bought your Spider Man figure, oh, for fuck's sake. Holy shit. Go away, wind. I miss that era of heroes and villains in comic books just naming things after themselves. So I want, in the next Infinity War movie, I want the Thanos Copter to make a return. Have you, like, people don't know? That put in a picture of the Thanos copter. That's can't be a real no, in thing. one comic, Thanos has a helicopter called the Thanos copter. That's just got the word Thanos right on the side. <laughs> I miss that stuff. It's amazing. I miss when you used to go into the shop and like to sell you bullshit. Toy manufacturers just came up with gadgets for heroes that they never used in the comics. Like, oh, here's the spider car that Spider Man uses with missiles on it. It's like Spider Man doesn't need a car. Here's like the X. So skeleton for Batman for when he's attacking people in like the winter shit like winter assault Batman and that shit did they ever try and sell Wonder Woman's vehicle the invisible jet they did was it just empty no, it was, no uh, Mattel I think or maybe Hot Wheels as a joke one year released an empty box that had his Wonder Woman's invisible jet and they did like a limited run of about 5,000 of them. And that is now one of the most like highly desirable collectibles of like Matchbox cards. Oh, it's Matchbox cards, I think, yeah. yeah. And that's the most desirable collectible and it's literally an empty box because they only made a few of them as, as a long joke. As it's sealed, it's still yeah. worth a lot of money. Obviously, yeah. if it's unsealed, you could have played with it. <laughs> <laughs> Stuff like that, I want to make a comeback. I want the next Justice League movie after they've explained why Henry Cavill's not in it. I want Wonder Woman to say, oh, this is my invisible jet. You never notice it's in the background because it's invisible. <laughs> Because we, we all have to admit, the best part about the invisible jet is that it doesn't make Wonder Woman invisible. <laughs> and you just see her sat in midair. So it reminds me a lot of, have you ever heard the explanation for why Superman can fly? 
In the early comics, like Superman couldn't fly. He could just he could leap tall buildings in a single bound. However, I think the animator said it looks really stupid for a really early Superman cartoon. Like it looks really stupid. We just show him jumping everywhere. So can we just make him fly? And someone at DC just went, yeah, why not? <laughs> it was the same. Like, do you know why the reason Kryptonite was invented? Why? Because the guy who voiced Superman in a radio show wanted a week off. So they said, we need, well, what can kill Superman? Superman's invincible. Oh, just introduce some bullshit that like, removes his powers so I can take a week off. And that's how Kryptonite was invented. <laughs> Superman seems like the laziest hero oh, story yeah. ever. It's like, I love all the stuff from early comics that people forget about. Like the fact uh, one of the Batman, the first gadget Batman used was a gun. <laughs> <laughs> like literally, the first... <laughs> was it not? No, the Batgun. No, the, the Batgun. <laughs> The first gadget Batman had was just a gun. He was like gunman. He was what time shooting everybody. He's like the Joker. If people don't know, in the early comics, Joker died in the first comic he appeared in because one guy somewhere went, doesn't it make Batman look kind of shit if his villain keeps escaping? And luckily someone overrid that decision. Now we've got the Joker today. Or uh, Wolverine, where an early writer for Wolverine um, suggested that the claws were stored in the gloves. So the, and then some writer went, no, that's stupid, because then anyone could put the, uh, the gloves on and become Wolverine. That's a stupid character. Put the claws in his arms. <laughs> but I love all those early decisions that people don't realise. Well, the classic one is Grey Hulk, isn't it? Oh, yeah. yeah the Hulk was originally Yeah, the, the Hulk was originally grey, and it was a printing error that made him green. Mm -hmm. So they had to bring, oh, shit, how do we like, explain this away? Oh, Grey Hulk's an alternate personality of the Hulk. <laughs> I didn't know they actually did that in the yeah. end. He's got an alternate personality that's grey called Joe Fix-It. <laughs> I am very sad, and I read a lot of comic books. <laughs> Back to naming shit, I will be remiss if I didn't mention Oliver fucking Queen, aka Green Arrow, because there is a great moment in one comic where Oliver Queen takes Harley Quinn to his own, like his, his version of the Batcave called the Arrow Cave, and Harley Quinn, as soon as she hears the name, goes, that's a stupid name, why don't you just call it the Quiver? <laughs> and Ollie Queen goes, fuck, that is a good name. <laughs> I'd love it if Batman put that naming convention on other things. Oh, when he's like when he's taking a shit. If he's in his Batman costume, it's a bat shit. Yeah. <laughs> when he goes for a cup of tea, it's a bat cup of tea. <laughs> well, that, there's like there's precedent for that because in Batman of the Future, um, like Bruce Wayne is like an old man, and like he passes the mantle of Batman to Terry McGuinness. But um, there's one storyline where he thinks he's going crazy because someone implants something in his head and keeps going, Bruce, Bruce, shoot yourself in the face. And at the end he goes, how do you know you weren't crazy? And Bruce Wayne looks at Terry McGinnis and goes, because in my own head, I don't call myself Bruce. <laughs> Which means he calls himself Batman in his own head. And it's like, oh my God, what, what, what ego has that guy got? That'd be even better if he called himself Mr. Wayne in his own head. Oh <laughs> man, that's good, that, isn't it? But I just love the idea that in his own head, Batman calls himself Batman, even when he's not in Bat costume. But I, I love the idea that he's got such ego that he has to have Bat like merchandise everywhere. Even Christian Bale Batman, who I think is the most grounded representation we've had of the character, drives around as Bruce Wayne in a Lamborghini Merchilago. And if people don't speak Italian, Merchilago is Italian for bat. So even when he's not Batman, he still drives around in a Batmobile. And it's like, there's branding, and then there's just taking the piss, isn't there? Have you watched Lego Batman? I have not watched Lego Batman. There's a bit towards the start where he's sat amongst like about 20 different variations of bat vehicles and oh. eating his food on his own. What's your favourite Batmobile? Because I am I hate the Tumblr. Oh, the Tumblr's, it's a bit... I, it's I got... think it, it's because it got overused so much. Because that became the default Batmobile. And I like the Batmobile from like the Tim Burton one where it can drive up walls. Oh, like the big Don car. I love the Don Batmobile. But we had, we had a toy of it that was like over a foot long. Like that massive toy. I think I had that one as well. But my Batman wasn't posable so he couldn't sit in it. So we just, my Batman was constantly ghost riding the whip. Just stood on the bonnet constantly. No other superhero has the same level of ego as Batman, do they? Like there's villains out there who have the same level. Like even Lex Luthor, a character who is defined by his ego and the fact he thinks he's better than a literal perfect human being. Like, doesn't have the same level of ego as Batman to name everything after himself. He has one company called LexCorp and that's it. Batman literally names every fucking thing in his event like, after himself. He needs to get over himself, man. He's, got, he's obsessed. He needs to get some help. <laughs> Getting back to that 1966 Batman film, after delivering a few ineffectual bat punches to the shark's shark kidneys, Batman calls the boy wonder Robin up in the Batcopter to ask him for a can of shark repellent bat spray, which he of course has in his helicopter, because of course Batman walks around thinking that he's going to be attacked by a shark in midair. We've talked about this before, but I want to bring it up again. 
this is the best representation of Batman in any piece of media ever. Adam West Batman is the best representation of Batman ever because he's the only one I'm aware of who is prepared so thoroughly for every conceivable situation he actively plans for mid-air shark attacks. Christian Bale Batman didn't do that. Christian Bale Batman, which everyone like loves, oh, that, that's the best Batman. Like, he gets into a fight with Bane, a master of the same martial arts as him, and he tries to beat him in a punching contest. He never thinks to use any of those gadgets he's got, like, you know, the sleep darts that he uses the in the movie. The bat sleep darts. Yeah, the bat sleep darts. He never thinks to use, like, you know, that thing he gets on his leg, you know, his robo leg, that he uses, like, kick through concrete. His bat robo leg. Yeah, the thing that never comes into play ever again, even <laughs> when... Um, Bane's got him in a fucking chokehold. Do you know what I mean? A chokehold is a good way to stop someone. It's a stamp on their foot with like a robot assisted foot stomp, but that never comes back. <laughs> so like, even like Ben Affleck Batman, all right, so how am I gonna like, you know, stop this room full of people who are threatening Martha, only walking and punch them? Adam West Batman, do you know what he'd have done? He'd have had something, some bullshit in the Batcave somewhere that would have solved that problem in five minutes. As far as I'm aware, Adam West Batman had more than just the shark repellent. Oh yes he does, because in addition to preparing for mid-air shark attacks, in the Batcopter, Batman has various other sprays, like, you know, to fend off the most dickish denizens of the ocean, including barracudas, manta rays, and whales. <laughs> so, I'm just now thinking, like, how, like, Batman is playing 4D chess, and he's like a million moves ahead. He's like, not even playing the same game as all the superheroes anymore, is he? When he's prepared for mid-air, whale attacks. What scenarios is this man envisioning where he's in his helicopter and he's going to need whale repellent? Maybe watch Free Willy. Oh my god, maybe. Oh my god, can you imagine that? Can you imagine Free Willy, but instead of like when he jumps over and the kid like touches the belly of Free Willy, instead of just Batman spraying him to get back in, Batman works for SeaWorld. <laughs> I'm sensing a Photoshop image coming on. Batman's like, no, get back into the cave. Oh man, that's good. That's a photo shot right there. The Free Willy poster, but it's Batman just spraying Free Willy. <laughs> just macing him. Oh. Maybe there'll be a documentary released in 20 years that'll like, guilt me into releasing into the ocean, but not today. <laughs> After being sprayed in the face by the shark repellent bat spray, the shark, understandably, loosens its kung fu mouth grip on Adam West Batman's leg and falls harmlessly into the ocean, where it explodes into a cloud of cheap sushi and pre-made shark fin soup. For some reason though, fans of Batman, or should I say fans of the more dark and brooding version of Batman that beat up Superman in that one comic, don't like this scene because it portrays the Dark Knight as being kind of silly, and it's unrealistic for him to be prepared for something so stupid, even though that's exactly what Batman does in all of the comics. I always found this criticism so strange because one of the crooks of Batman as a character is that he's prepared for everything, up to and including fighting himself. I think in the Tower of Babel storyline, he has like this um, list of ways to beat all the other superheroes, including himself. And he just says in it, um, Batman is just a normal guy, just kill him. <laughs> <laughs> he admits, like, you could just shoot me and it'd probably kill me. Yeah, if I remember correctly, doesn't he get kicked out of the Justice League because someone yeah. else gets their hands on someone these Someone finds why he's preparing to kill us all, and he goes, because you might go evil. And then I think in one comment, he does beat everybody. I think he beats the Flash by building a robot suit that he spends like $400 billion on to have a computer in it powerfully enough to process as fast as um, the Flash's brain does. And Joe you know beats him? Trips him up. Just sprays shit on the floor and the Flash falls over. That reminds me of that meme where there's that clip where uh, Wally West is like, I don't, the Flash, like, I don't want to reveal my identity and Batman goes through them all and just... Re and then when he takes off his own mask, it just... John Cena! <laughs> <laughs> I do remember watching one episode where Batman and Superman switch costumes. Yeah, Superman dresses up like Batman when Batman goes missing and he goes and fights Bane. And like, I love that idea. I want it to happen in more. So I want that to happen in the Justice League movie because how much would that add to the mystique surrounding Batman in Gotham City if just for one night, just one night, Superman wore the costume and just did all the shit that Superman can do in the Batman costume. You would never commit crime ever again. <laughs> It's like, imagine like the criminals were at the bar later like, and I goes, you know, like, Batman, I heard it the other night, like, he disappears into a night like a shadow. I go, yeah, but he's just a guy, isn't he? And there's some person goes, well, actually, no, because the other day I saw him lift up a truck and throw it into orbit. I'm like, what? Yeah. You'd never commit crime ever again. <laughs> 
The thing about <laughs> Superman is obviously he has that power, but he's meant to be a nice guy. Yeah. If Batman, Batman had that power, <laughs> it's like. It's like, I think there's one co- a What If comic where the Punisher gets this, ma- uh, this Venom symbiote and becomes the most powerful motherfucker ever. And like because as well, the Venom symbiote respects the Punisher's will to murder so much, it willingly allows itself to be controlled. It's like, you know what? If you're going to murder, I'm okay with that. Have my power freely. And the Punisher just uses the Venom symbiote to just make awesome guns and shoot everybody. It's, it's the best. Oh, it's like that's game over, isn't it? <laughs> we just give the Punisher the ability to kill harder. Another criticism of that scene is that it's just bad writing to show Batman escaping from a seemingly inescapable situation by using a gadget that has never been alluded to or mentioned before, even though it totally has. What do you mean? I don't remember that ever being mentioned ever. Not in the show, but in the original comics, specifically Batman issue 117, it is shown that Batman does indeed carry around shark repellent spray in his utility belt at all times. So how do you find this out? Well, in that story, Batman and Robin get sent to an alien planet. Just, just go with it, guys. And they're trapped underwater and they get attacked by a giant purple sea dragon. And Batman like, reasons to himself that he can't use his anti-gravity gun because that won't work underwater, obviously. And instead pulls out some shark repellent spray. Reasoning that if it works on the killers of the deep on Earth, it should work on the killers of the deep on this planet too. And this being a comic book, it does. And the big purple sea dragon runs away. The important thing to note though here is that Batman absolutely does carry shark repellent spray and there was a precedent for it six years before that movie ever got released. Another thing I think it's important to note is that it's established Batman has an anti-gravity gun and he never once thinks to use it to just float the Joker 400 foot into the sky so he can serve out his sentence to Arkham as like, you know, a prisoner of the clouds. <laughs> as a balloon. <laughs> why does sky he not, prison. Why does he not think a gravity gun will work underwater? What is affected by gravity? <laughs> it's a very old comic. Don't question the logic. It's fine. The important thing to know, Brad, is that Batman does have shark repellent spray in his utility belt, and it wasn't lazy writing. In fact, it was good writing, because they did their fucking research. If you could have a utility belt, what do you reckon you'd have in it? The back credit card. Because I, I love the idea of like what happens if Batman overspends. Are they really going to send a bailiff to get money from Batman? That's the bravest motherfucker on Earth right there, and it's like that scene in like The Dark Knight. It's like, oh, so you think Bruce Wayne, a billionaire, is a guy who beats people up at night in a robot suit and you want to blackmail this dude? It's like the guy at the bank. Okay, we need to go get money from these people. Okay, so Mrs. Jones, like she owes like $40. Uh, Mr. Smith, he bought a fridge last week and he can't pay for it. And you, Batman, bought 40,000 Batarangs last week and charged it on his back credit card. Go get the money from him. Where's, where's his address? The Batcave. And where's that? Oh, it's, it's just listed as the Batcave. We really didn't think this through. We really didn't think through giving this guy a credit card. If I was that bank and I needed someone to go brown breaking backs, so I'd get in the Bane lift. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> that pun was so bad, I just don't want to talk about Batman anymore. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs> oh, what do you want to talk about then, mate, as is the tradition of the channel? Because I'm taking this fucking shirt off because... I'm sweating my tits off, as people can probably tell, depending on how sweaty I actually am. You, you definitely wore that specifically because it, like, you wanted to fuck up with the green screen today. Yeah. You? Oh yeah. I find it weird. That's a weird comment we always get. Like, oh, do you know your shirt messed up with the green screen? Yes. <laughs> it's the exact same fucking colour. Why do you think I bought it? I, I remember going on eBay and going, I want a Hawaiian shirt for a night out, and I went, this one's green. <laughs> I could have ordered a blue one. I went, that one's green. That's really going to annoy Brad. I'll order that one. So I did. I'm, really I'm a little bit worried because uh, before we start filming today, Carl tried in a few of his clothes and they're getting a bit too small because he's, uh, he's going to... I know you're going to go shopping. I know what colour you're picking. <laughs> We're going to the gym and on my old clothes, fit, including this. This is like, I was like, mate, I don't think I can put this up anymore, but I'll put it on anyway because I thought it's too funny not to do. Oh man, it cracks me up so much, just dicking around with a green screen. I know, Brad, that I said that pun was bad, but I do have to admit it was a very Batman-esque pun. I can imagine, like, Robin in the 1960s show saying a pun that bad, so congratulations on that one. That's something I want to bring back in the, um, if they ever bring Robin back, 
I mean, obviously not the Titans. No, yeah, the Titan. Oh, fuck, fuck Batman. Batman. It's where he goes, gee fuck, golly. No, no, fuck Batman. Fuck that show. Jeez. Where Robin goes like, gee golly, Creepers, Batman. I want it. I want Holy hum- Jiminy, Batman. I want humour in DC movies. I'd really appreciate some levity in the stuff I watch for fun. I don't like... The, what we have to mention, the best example, it just has to be Man of Steel which is two and a half hours long. It's colour graded to shit, so it all looks dark and depressing. And it has a scene in it where Superman drowns in a pit of skulls. <laughs> I watched that film in the cinema and kids start crying and I can see why. There are so many baffling moments in that movie that just shit all over the idea of Superman as a character. Like, what's your favourite, Brad? Because mine's just the pit of skulls. <laughs> just it's like, yeah, Superman. It's like, I'm going to save the day. Ah, just drowning in skulls. I think it's the complex mindfuck that is Kevin Costner's Daddy Ken. Oh, my God. Like, if people don't, have not read the comics, like, the only reason Superman is a nice guy is because he was raised by, like, the nicest people in the world. And I think a common phrase used in the comics is that Superman is at heart just a farm boy from Kansas trying to do the right thing. And the reason why is because his parents are just so nice. So I remember watching the movie and it's like Kevin Costner just tells him, sometimes, Superman, you don't have to rescue a bus full of children. It's like, they couldn't, like, I get where they're going. You have to hide your powers. Don't say it after he pushes a bus full of drowning children out of a fucking river. It's like, what am I supposed to do, Dad? Just let them die? Yes, sometimes. Sometimes, son, yes. Well, there, and then there's the bit where he just stands there and goes, don't come rescue me. And it's like, he could have walked over and just grabbed him and it, no one would have gone, that man's an alien. Yeah, no, that they, man they, is they, definitely they were, a superpowered really alien. Just as a miracle. And that's it. It's oh wow, I can't believe science that yeah, I was really lucky. Wow, yeah, okay. But no, like just holds his hand out just like, and the best bit is, in the next movie, they double down and have his mum say the same thing. <laughs> like in Batman vs. Superman, where Martha, you don't owe these people anything. That's the point. He doesn't, but he does it anyway. He's a nice guy. Because he's not supposed to be raised by sociopathic dickholes. He's, he's so baffling. And you know what you have to put in? You've got to put in, because I found out recently this is a thing that existed, like, the end of the movie, we all know, it ends with Superman breaking Zod's neck. Like, Superman, the character defined by the fact he never kills anybody and he always tries to do the right thing, just killing his villain by just snapping his fucking neck. There is a scene from behind the scenes of Zack Snyder showing Henry Cavill how he wants him to act that scene out, and it's Zack Snyder just snapping some guy's neck. And people, people keep editing it to put Zach on the on the face of the guy he's snapping the neck off. Just the DC universe. It's just Zach's like, a, <laughs> oh, so, oh man, so but all, right, all I want is some levity in my movies. What about people wearing tights flying around? As much as I dislike these movies, I do like how as they've gone on, you can tell that DC is just getting more and more desperate to emulate Marvel's success to the point where in Justice League they just brought in the director of like the Avengers and went, please fix it, and he couldn't because they'd already filmed too much and they couldn't do reshoots because of Henry Cavill's fucking moustache. <laughs> and we'll talk about that in another video because I've got a, there's a great story behind that and um, how it all went about. But my favourite part of that movie is that you can clearly tell They've tried to brighten it up in some places, but they couldn't because there's too much Zack Snyder left in it. And do you know the fight in the movie like, that takes place in front of the Superman memorial where, spoilers, Superman fights everybody? Yeah. In the original trailer, if you can track it down, you'll notice that that fight scene was supposed to take place at night. Really? Yeah. Because obviously that's where, because obviously it's supposed to be dark and depressing like all the other movies in that franchise. However, Joss Whedon was like, oh no, we need to make it like, you know, brighter. But they couldn't because it was too dark. Which is why instead of taking place in the middle of the day, it takes place at like five o'clock in the evening at dusk. Because that's as much as they could brighten it without ruining it. And that's why all the costumes look so shit. Because they've just thrown off the colour balance. It's like, we brought it up before, didn't we? We bring up the poster for Justice League and it just looks so fucking washed out because they've tried to make it bright, but none of the costumes are. So the only thing they can do is just turn up the colour balance. We talked about it before as well, didn't we? If you up the saturation a little bit, the movie does look much they look more so fun. Yeah, they obviously try to do that, but they couldn't do it too much, so everyone just looks awful. <laughs> and that's why I love the poster for Justice League where they realise, oh man, all these costumes look so bad. Brighten them, we can't. 
oh, make them track, make them look more like a cartoon, but it doesn't. It just looks like they washed it the fuck out. Oh, it's amazing. And now they haven't got Henry Cavill. <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, do you know what I love though? That Henry Cavill quit the DC Extended Universe after they brought his character back to life. 